This is our seventh Sunday already where we're doing church online and our pews are empty. Well, there's one or two people here, but I know our churches are empty today and I know that's not how God intended it. Uh, In the parable of the wedding feast in Matthew 22, God said, I want my house full and I know it won't be long. We will be full again. It won't be too many Sundays. We're going to start looking at it week by week. Our United Methodist Bishop, Lori Haller, has recommended waiting till the first Sunday in June. The Presbytery has recommended even after that. But starting at about the middle of the month, we'll start looking at this week by week and meet with our boards and make the best decision for all of us. But uh, we'll soon be back in our churches, folks, so be patient. Welcome to worship. I'm so glad you're here. And we're going to treat this today more like a regular worship service. Let's bow our heads and our hearts as we prepare to come into God's presence. Heavenly Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would come and fill this sanctuary, fill my mouth, fill our ears, fill every heart, fill every home. Let us hear your word today and no others. See your face and no others. Honor and glorify you and no one else. May this be a time when we dedicate all of us to all of you, that we might more fully know you as our shepherd, and we become your sheep. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We're going to sing a song. I brought my guitar today. We're going to do Awesome God. So our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. So boys and girls, you may need to help. awesome God. And God is an awesome God. Let's try it again. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. And no matter what's going on in our world, God is still our awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Turn to each other in your living room and say, my God's an awesome God, because indeed he is. Today we're learning a little from the 23rd Psalm, how God is our shepherd and we are his sheep. And uh, this is a song we have done several times in Watcher and Delta. Uh, you Kyoto folks, I don't think we have sung this over there. But this, is, uh, this song um, is called Lead Me, Lord. And it says, Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me, I will answer. Lead me, Lord, I will go. Answer. You have called me, and I will answer. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. I will fall. Lead 
me, Lord, I will go. Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me, I will answer. You have called me, I will answer. God is our shepherd, and he is the one who wants to lead us and guide us in the path we should go. God bless you. You know you're safe in place, so you can shake hands with your family right now. And if not, give a wink and a hi to the uh, screen you're watching. Maybe I'll get the vibe. Uh, So good morning, boys and girls. It's our time. Come and gather around. I want you to get close and... um, Every week I've given a shout out to some of our boys and girls at home. Today I'd like to give a shout out to some of our boys and girls in our Kyoto church and say hi to you this morning. So Gavin, Isaiah, and Jade, good morning. God bless you. Welcome. Charlie and Alice, so glad to have you here today. God bless you. Tell your mom and dad hi for me. Kaylin and Kylie, God bless you girls. Can't wait to see you again. Henry and William, are you, you got your sweater on this morning? Kind of warm. Hope you're ready for worship today. Landon and Riley, God bless you. Welcome, guys. I'm so glad that I can't see you, but I will soon. We'll be together again. So today, we're learning another verse in Scripture. It's Psalm 23, verse 1, and uh, Crystal put a really nice children's uh, lesson on our Facebook page that follows this verse. And this is the verse, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Do you got that? Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Well now, if you have a shepherd, it means we must be what? If Jesus is our shepherd, what are we? I can't hear you, say it again. That's right, we're his sheep. And that's all we should want to be. And you know, whether we're little or big, we should only want to be Jesus' sheep. So we're going to do a song together, and uh, this song is called, I Just Want to Be a Sheep. So we'll sing a line, and then you're going to respond as loud as you can by going, bah. You got it? Want to practice? Here we go. Bah. Because we're going to be Jesus' sheep. And mom and dads, now if you're saying bad at home, I want you to stick that in the comment section on our Facebook page. That way we can all be sheep, okay? Here we go. I I just want to be a sheep, bad. I just want to be a sheep, bad. I just want to be a sheep, sheep, bad. Oh, I'm off. I just want to be a sheep, bad. I just want to be a sheep, bad. I just want to be a sheep, bad. I just want to be a sheep. In the Bible, there were some people called Pharisees, and they thought Jesus wouldn't love you if you did anything wrong. Well, that's not right, is it? We don't want to be a Pharisee. So this verse goes, I don't want to be a Pharisee. I don't want to be a Pharisee Because they're not fair, you see Because they're not fair, you see I just want to be a sheep 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 And then there were a group of people called Sadducees Do you know the Sadducees didn't believe that there was a heaven? Or didn't believe that when we left this earth, we would live with Jesus forever in heaven? They didn't believe that wonderful promise. So they were sad, you see. I don't want to be a Sadducee. I don't want to be a Sadducee. Because they're so sad, you see. I just want to be a sheep. Bad. I just want to be a sheep, bad. I just want to be a sheep, bad. Kelvin, I can't hear you. I just want to be a sheep. I just want to be a sheep. 
last verse, I don't want to be a goat, because, well, I don't know why, but goats aren't in the Bible like sheep are. Sheep follow Jesus, so I don't want to be a goat. I just want to be a sheep. I don't want to be a goat. Nope. I don't want to be a goat. Nope. I don't want to be a goat. Nope. I don't want to be a goat. I just want to be a sheep. 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 What's our memory verse? Psalm 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We are his sheep. Let's pray. Dear God, I pray for all of our young boys and girls today who are listening at home, and I know they're shouting out, Bah! They are your little sheep. Well, Lord, we're all your sheep. And that means you're our good shepherd. Jesus said he was the good shepherd. Help us follow you every day, Lord. In your wonderful name, amen. God bless you. So uh, a couple of things today. Uh, one is, you might have remembered last week, Facebook was really overloaded and we lost our feed for a few minutes. If that happens again today, and it might, you just stay tuned. We'll be right back up. And, and uh, C. Hoffman, who is running our video this morning, he does a great job and he'll keep you informed of what's going on and when we're back up again. So just hang in there if it happens again. I want to celebrate some birthdays and anniversaries today. And uh, again, send me your birthdays and anniversaries so we can celebrate them on Sundays. We'll start with our Watch Your Delta folks. I'll even start with my own family. Yesterday was my grandson Kane's 12th birthday. Him and I were going to go fishing, and we didn't get to do it, but he got to go fishing anyway. Kane, love you, buddy. Happy birthday. And tomorrow is my daughter Valerie's birthday. And Valerie will be... No, she wouldn't want me to tell you. Happy birthday, Val. Love you. Ethan's birthday is Wednesday the 6th. Happy birthday, Ethan. Tim and Sarah Bruns have an anniversary Tuesday the 5th. Happy anniversary, Tim and Sarah. Uh, Chris Lundy and Dave Storm and Keldon all have, Keldon Hoylman, all have birthdays Thursday the 7th and Amy Spain Saturday the 9th. From our Kyoto Church, Nate Owen, uh, Jane and Tom's son, is Friday the 1st, was last Friday the 1st. Uh, Scott Westerndorf, he had a birthday Friday the 1st. Vicki Fagan and Larry Lyle, they have a birthday this coming Tuesday the 5th. And Dwayne Sprouse, Dwayne, happy birthday, buddy. He had a birthday last Friday the 1st. Happy birthday and happy anniversary, and God bless all of you. A couple of announcements. Uh, one is I mentioned that our boards will be paying attention to what the recommendations are from our governor and our bishops and church leadership. It'll ultimately be our decision, but we're going to err on the side of safety and caution. You know, John Wesley kept three simple rules, do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. We're not going to do anything that could in any way put our people at risk. So be patient, folks, and stay tuned. We're going together as church boards make the best decision for reopening our churches, but it won't be long, so hang in there. Uh, I want to thank everybody who helped at the food pantry last week, and the truck will be the 12th. The truck will be the 12th. Kyoto is having a sessions committee on the 21st by Zoom, so folks, put that on your calendar. And uh, today is district conference. Now, some of you may be a district officer and might have gotten the link to that, but district conference is at 2 o'clock this afternoon, uh, 2 to 3.30, and it'll be by Zoom, and I'm sure you can find the link on the district website if it wasn't sent to you. I want to just thank all of you who are doing such a wonderful job reaching out to one another. I've tried for three weeks to start a telephone tree and haven't had many takers, but everyone I call already is talking to a lot of folks. So I'm grateful that we are staying connected, and I want to encourage you to Think about the elderly, the alone, people with uh, chronic illness in your neighborhood. Make sure you reach out to them and give them a call and check in on them. 
Uh, we were out on a walk yesterday, and we saw an, an elderly gentleman sitting out in his front porch, and we just asked him what he was doing for groceries, and he said, my neighbors are taking care of me, and that's a wonderful thing, so make sure to watch out for one another. This is a terrific time t- to do that. Uh, next Sunday is Mother's Day, and uh, our churches have always given away carnations or flowers to our moms. Here at Watch Here, the boys and girls in Sunday school make flower pots and flowers, and I'm sorry we can't do that, although I think some plans are being made for some of that around. But uh, ladies, all ladies of every age, um, we invite you to turn in next week. We want to honor the ladies of our parish next Sunday morning on Mother's Day. And you can bet I'll be honoring the mother of my children and the mothers of my grandchildren and remembering our moms. I invite you to do the same. This morning as we pray, I want you to be thinking about people you would like to pray for and have them in your mind so you can lift them up to God in a minute. Would you bow your heads, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for loving us, for being our good shepherd. Jesus said in John 10 that I am the good shepherd, that I know my own and they know me, that my sheep hear my voice and follow me, another voice they will not follow. Lord, help us to be the kind of sheep that recognize your voice. When David wrote, the Lord is my shepherd, he would have written from experience. He grew up as a shepherd. He knew the kinds of tasks and duties that a shepherd would have to care for, to provide, to protect, and to direct the flock. And he knew that fit you perfectly, for indeed you do care for, even love, You guide and protect and direct your flock, your sheep. Maybe the question, Lord, isn't whether or not you want to be our shepherd. Maybe the question is whether or not we really want to be your sheep. Oftentimes during times of chaos, times of uncertainty, times of fear, we turn to you. When we're ill, we want prayer. When there's a national tragedy like 9-11, our churches are full. But soon as things are normal again, whatever that means, we go on about our way. All we like sheep have gone astray, the prophet Isaiah said. The question may not be whether you want to be our shepherd. The question may be whether or not we want to be your sheep. And if we want to be your sheep, then we are your sheep all times. Hardships, seasons of health, good times and bad times, sunsets and sunrises. For we don't get to be your sheep only on the days we need you. Lord, help us to have that same desire you have to be our shepherd, that we would also want to be your sheep. Today, Lord, we pray for the concerns and needs of our parish. We pray for any among us who are ill, any among us who are bereaved, any among us who struggle, any among us who are fighting anxiety and depression, that they would find peace and comfort here today. Would you take a moment and pray for those names God has placed on your heart? Lord, today we pray for the ones out there who are looking for answers, who know there's more to life than just a party or a good time or a paycheck or a house or a car. There's more to life, and they're looking for it. Lord, may this morning be the beginning of them finding what their hearts are seeking after. Lord, we pray for leadership, leadership of our churches, our communities, our state, our nation. This is a global pandemic. We pray for global leaders. This is a terrible burden leadership bears during this time. And there are no perfect solutions. We pray for those in leadership. And Lord, we pray this day that if we have done anything 
that's offended you, that's been harmful to your kingdom, if we've said things or done things or thought things we ought not have, if we've hurt another person, if we've left undone some goodness that you've called us to that we've ignored, whatever it might be, Lord, that separated us from you, we repent and pray your forgiveness and grace and strength to do better. Lord, all that's before us, we place in your hands our prayers and petitions at your feet. As we pray together in Jesus' name, he who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Um, I did not mention, but I do want to thank so many of you who have been sending in your tithes and offerings. It's been very helpful during this time. And again, if you're going through a tough time, lost your job, extra bills, you take care of your family. God will take care of the church. But for those of you who have been able to, I just wanted to thank you for your faithful stewardship. Well, I'm going to invite my dear wife, Vicki, to come up and share the 23rd Psalm with you. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, Vicki. Would you join me in the prayer preparation printed on your heart? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, there was a young pastor who was getting ready to do the children's sermon on the 23rd Psalm. Now, he was feeling kind of full of himself. He thought he was really quite something. So he gathered the boys and girls around, and he read the 23rd Psalm, and he said, Now, boys and girls, I'm going to give you a couple questions, and you answer. Number one, there were many sheep in Jesus' day, and they were scattered, and they didn't know how to fend for themselves, and they couldn't protect themselves, and they couldn't feed themselves. They had to have someone watch over them, they were the sheep. Now, boys and girls, um, sometimes children are like that. So if I would say the followers of Jesus were like sheep, what would you call yourself? What would boys and girls be today? And the boys and girls knew the answer. They go, we would be sheep. And he says, very good. The sheep are the children of God. And then there was a shepherd, oh, a wonderful man, someone who took care of them, someone who spoke wise words, someone who was always there for them, of course, thinking of himself. And he said, so who would the children's shepherd be? One little boy said, Jesus. And the young pastor said, well, yes, but what does that make me? And the little boy said, the sheepdog? So, I don't know. We, see, my wife laughed at it. We are the sheep, and we only have one shepherd, do we not? 
You know, David, who wrote, matter of fact, if you look in most Bibles, it just says a Psalm of David. David wrote the 23rd Psalm. And uh, do you remember what David did as a child? Do you remember when Jesse came to look because God had said that the next king of Israel, or the first king of Israel, would come out of the house of Jesse? And remember when uh, the prophet uh, Samuel got to Jesse's house and said, one of your sons will be king. And, and of course, he prays out the oldest and the wisest and the biggest and the bravest and the smartest. And, you know, and one by one, uh, Samuel discounts them. And finally, he says, don't you have any more sons? And only David, but he's just a little ruddy-faced boy. He's the shepherd. He's out with the flock. We'll bring him in. Uh, Jesse says, surely, surely you're not telling me that God would want a little boy like this to be king. And remember what Samuel said, oh, Jesse, you're thinking wrong. You see, we judge people by the outside. God judges by the heart. David was known as a man after God's own heart. So when David wrote, the Lord is my shepherd, he knew just what he was talking about. He'd been a shepherd. He'd protected his flock from lions and bears. He had taken them to places of pasture and water, green pasture, still water. He'd walked with them through valleys. He'd spent the night with them. You know, when Jesus said in John 10 that he was the door to the sheep, well, that comes from the ancient tradition that when the shepherds would take their flocks up in the hillsides overnight to keep them from thieves or wolves, <coughs> they would place them in box canyons, and the shepherd would sleep in the entryway of the canyon, literally becoming the door. So predators or thieves would have to literally walk over the shepherd to get to the sheep. When David said, the Lord is my shepherd, he knew what he was talking about. It's interesting also that uh, shepherds were often the lowest on the social economic spectrum. You know, uh, shepherds were who were called to attend the birth of the baby Jesus. They were the first to hear the angelic message, uh, Hosanna in the highest, unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior. Shepherds were not invited to palaces. They didn't get invited to the parties. They didn't seat at banquet halls. They lived outdoors, ate outdoors. Many times they were children. Rarely did they own the flocks they tended. They were people of poverty, people who lived in caves and barns. Why not? Because the God who sent his son was in the language of both sinner and saint alike, a friend of sinners and tax collectors. Jesus always identified with people the world had kicked out. Let me tell you something. Maybe you feel like you don't fit in. Maybe you feel like this world was, didn't have a place for you. Maybe you feel like you didn't measure up. Maybe you weren't the first one picked, or heck, maybe you were like me back in the old days of picking teams for volleyball and baseball. I was about the last one picked. God will pick you. God wants you. He loves you not for who you'll be one day. He loves you for who you are right now. Isaiah 40, 11, He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather his lambs in his arms and carry those in his bosom and gently lead those that belong to God. Our God is like a shepherd to us. 1 Peter 2.25 and 5.4 He's called our great shepherd. There's a connecting tie from Old Testament to New that tells us that God is our shepherd and has manifest that in his son. 
the great discourse on the Good Shepherd in John 10, Jesus tells us, I am the Good Shepherd. Do you remember when Moses was kneeling before the burning bush on Mount Sinai? And God said, Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Moses said, who shall I say has sent me? Who are you, God? And God says, I am that I am. Tell them, I am have sent thee. You know, Jesus seven times used that language. In this case, in John 10, he says, I am the great shepherd. I'm here to tell you, God wants to be your shepherd. My question is, do you want to be God's sheep? That's the question. I, I know how this is, folks. See, we live in an era of declining, um, I don't want to use the word religion because that doesn't really represent what the Christian faith's about. Declining belief, uh, declining commitment, declining sense of belonging to the house of God, connecting to things that used to bind us together. When I was a boy, grew up in the 50s and 60s, there were two institutions that held America together. And everything in our culture revolved around these two institutions. They were the hubs of our society. And one was the church, and one was the family. And if I'm the devil, and I want to destroy a culture, if I want to tear down a, a society, I'd probably start attacking the two things that were the glue that held it together. I'd probably want to attack the church and the family. Well, I'll tell you what, he's done a good job. Beginning with the very late 60s, toward the end of the baby boom, the Protestant church in America has been in decline. And it's not because we don't recognize our need for it. It's because we have filled up our lives with other things. So we have other connecting ties that pool us in groups and places and fill up our thinking, our program calendar, phones always beeping at us, taking us away from that which used to be a binding tie in our life. Sometimes we come back when things are tough. Sometimes we come back when the world's a mess. Sometimes we come back when there's things like illness or loss, when families fall apart or cave in. I'll be talking a little bit about that next Sunday. But I'm here to tell you, our good shepherd doesn't want his sheep to only come when you need something. He wants us there all the time. There's a story Dwight Moody used to tell. Um, he cites a man by the name of Dr. Andrew Boner who tells the story of how shepherds in the highlands of Scotland used to take their sheep out on the mountains and uh, the sheep would get wayward and they would look down the hillsides and they would see um, uh, little valleys or crevices and little cliffs or um, ledges where there would be patches of lush green grass. And they would look at that and those sheep would find their way. You've probably been driven through Trail Ridge Road or the mountains or maybe through Glacier. You've seen those sheep on those little ledges. Boy, they can get down there and they find those little patches of dark green. And uh, someone has said, why doesn't the shepherd go get them? And uh, the answer the shepherd would say, because they, the sheep don't want to come. They want to eat all that grass. And if the shepherd would go on that steep ledge and try to get those sheep out, his own life would be in peril. So the shepherd has to wait. 
until the sheep has eaten all the grass and gone a couple days without and is hungry and, and in want and thirsty and when there's nowhere else to turn and nowhere else to go and no other provision, then it's willing to come back. And the shepherd can slip down and put a rope over the sheep and guide it back to safety. And Moody says we're like that. When things are going good, when there's green pasture, when we're healthy and pockets full of stuff and lots of friends and activities, you know, God's kind of just out there. We'll call him if we need him. Yeah, he's a good shepherd, but, you know, Lord, thank you. We'll let you know when we need you. And so God has to wait until we have no other resource, until the green's all gone and we're hungry and thirsty. You know, think of what Jesus told the woman at the well. If you drink of this water, you'll thirst again. If you drink the water that I offer you, you'll never thirst again. And once we find out that there is nowhere else to go, we're willing to come back. Isaiah 53 is the great messianic chapter where Isaiah talks about the coming of Christ. In the sixth verse of that passage, Isaiah says, All we like sheep have gone astray. Isn't that true? All we like sheep have gone astray. Every one of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord laid upon him, the good shepherd, the iniquity of us all. I'm here to tell you, God wants to be your shepherd. And he made that accessible to us in a face we can see, a body we can embrace, a person that we can know. Jesus, I am the good shepherd. Question is, do you want to be a sheep? I remember when 9-11 happened. Remember where you were? There's a few things I can remember. I remember where I was when Kennedy was assassinated. I remember where I was when uh, Challenger exploded. I remember where I was when we first started getting word of the planes crashing into the World Trade Center. Had a gal in the Watcher Church call me that day and said, we got to do something. we got to do something. we got to open our church up. And uh, you know how Methodists are. You know, the word comes from methodical. We have to plan, have a committee meeting, put together a vision, have some votes, put together um, uh, our plans, approve them at the board, announce them with some flyers, send out a few emails, um, do a newsletter with a, with, with a poster, and then have the event. By the time we get there, people forgot what we're doing. And I said to this gal, I said, I, there's no way for us to get word around. We need to open the church up and have something right away. Well, knowing people were riveted to the TV that day, I said, let's do it tomorrow. I'll come over. I don't know what we're going to do. We'll just open the church up, spread the word best you can. And as it is always supposed to be done, she did. She called some people who called some people who called some people. Wow, what an idea. How do we build churches today? You call some people who call some people who call some people. I came over the next night, and uh, we opened our church up. The place was packed. Probably more than Easter. Front to back. Not even sure I remember much of what we did that night. I know we sang a patriotic hymn or two. Prayed. Wept just gathered in God's house because everybody was frightened. I was stunned by how that moment made people seek God. All of a sudden, we all wanted to be sheep. Next Sunday, 
church was still full. Next Sunday, pretty full. Next Sunday, marginally full. Next Sunday, half full. Once we got back to normal, whatever that means, we no longer wanted to be sheep. But God, you stay, you, you stay close because if there's another tragedy, we'll need you again. So we, we don't want you to get very far away, but don't interrupt our life right now. We've got stuff going on. There's a reason we're going through this coronavirus. I am convinced of it. See, the door to the ark was open for 100 years, long time. No one had time to walk in, of course. No one had any words for Noah that weren't scandalous and, and abusive and derogatory and pejorative. And Noah said, you guys better get in the boat. Rain's coming. Ah. But one day, of course, what happened? It rained. And the Bible says that God himself closed the door to the ark. And suddenly, everybody wanted to be sheep. But the door was shut. I think this season that we are in, and that's one reason I don't want to rush this, because I think God is at work in a way right now that God's not been at work for a long time. I think he's got our ear. If this ends tomorrow, we're all just going to be gone again in three or four weeks. God's not going to let this end until we respond. Just us and God. We don't need to post it, what we think about stuff. We don't need to criticize somebody for doing something we don't think is the right thing. We better get our own hearts right. We better make peace ourselves. I need to be confessing my sin. I just want to be a sheep. Bah. Jesus wants to be your good shepherd. Do you want to be his sheep? Oh, I was going to talk a lot more about this psalm today, but I got sidetracked. If you want to get the full study on the 23rd Psalm, Watch the video from our Bible study last Wednesday. But I'll refer to one more section. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I don't think you can say one without saying the other. We don't really know what it means to be in want, do we? Not like it would have been the case during the Depression or certainly in the Sudan right now. We're not really, I mean, they're, they're granted, there are people in poverty and there are people hungry. I'm not sure it's the same thing. There are places in this world that people are starving. Today, kids get home from school and they say, I'm starving, Mom, which usually means they haven't had a pizza for a couple hours. What did David mean when he said, I shall not want? I think he meant two things. I think one was, it was a declaration. It was a declarative statement. If God is my shepherd, if I am his sheep, I'm not going to want. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory, in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4.19. My God shall supply all of my needs, according to his riches and glory, in Christ Jesus. 
When I say, my, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I am trusting God to provide my needs. I am trusting God. Sometimes my wanter and my needer get confused. I need a little more of this or a little bigger that or a little extra that or one more of these. You know, we're to the place in our life where when Christmas comes or a birthday and kids say, what's on your Christmas list? Well, ours is getting simpler. I just want some more years with my family, with my wife. Just want to be healthy. Just want a warm home and a comfy bed, you know. I'm trusting my good shepherd for that. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. My God shall supply all of my needs. Maybe not my wants, but he'll supply our needs. I think the second thing that says is, I'm not asking for more than God gives. When I say my God is my shepherd and I'll not want, I am not going to ask for more than my God gives. Remember in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, why do you seek for and worry about what you'll wear or what you'll eat or where you'll go? Pagans or the Gentiles or the non-believers worry about those things. I tell you, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and this other stuff will all work itself out. I will be content. Well, that's a hard thing for me to say. Me who always wants a bigger boat. The Lord is my shepherd. I'll not want. I'll trust God to meet my needs. I will not ask for more than my God gives. I'm here to tell you, folks, Jesus is the good shepherd. He wants to be your shepherd. Do you want to be his sheep? Not just during the coronavirus, but when this is over, will you still be a sheep? Would you bow your heads, please? Father in heaven, we join our voices to that of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. See, Lord, we have been that sheep that's gone astray, each one turning to their own way. But it's time we come back in the fold. Maybe this season of the coronavirus is the time that you have chosen to get our attention If so, we are tuning in. It is time. It is time that we made peace with you. It is time we repented of our sins. It is time we got our life in order. One day the door will shut. So now, while we have the opportunity, let us declare... We want to be your sheep. Today, Lord, we confess you as not only our good shepherd, but our Lord and our Savior. Today, we ask that in your grace, you forgive us all our sin. We pray that you would bring us into the fold and protect us and shepherd us and guide us. And we pray that we will have the heart of a sheep for the rest of our life. And we ask this in the name of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Amen.
Well, God bless you folks. So glad to spend this time with you today. Trust that you have uh, felt God's presence this morning. You know, I sure have. Uh, We'll be back Wednesday morning at 9.30 for Bible study, Bible brunch. Bring your cup of coffee and tune in. Um, My daughter Tiffany is about to give us our ninth grandchild, maybe this week. And so if something doesn't happen, just uh, if I don't show up quite on time on Wednesday, I'll send a quick message out. I don't know when baby's coming, but would you say a little prayer for my daughter Tiffany and that new little one on its way? Can't wait to meet him. And I can't wait to visit with you again. We'll be together soon, folks. So God bless you and keep you. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. Amen. God bless you.